Good morning. I'd like to welcome, like to welcome everyone, uh, thank our faculty, residents, and uh, staff for attending this morning. And uh, in particular, I would like to uh, give a, a very uh, warm welcome to our resident applicants who are joining us for our first of uh, three interview days for the uh, 2014 uh, season. This is our third um, annual State of the Department report. I'm very, very excited to report on what I think has been an incredibly exciting year for Baylor and for the Department of Surgery. I'd like to uh, jump right in by recalling and uh, recollecting for us the uh, department vision that we all as a department put together several years ago. And that vision was to build a highly visible Baylor surgery brand widely recognized and franchised nationally as a leader in innovative surgery and excellence in surgical practice. To recruit future leaders of our profession, so our applicants who are here today, to our residency programs, to in part by developing a competency-based curriculum that is innovative and novel and through our research programs to create disruptive innovation that is translatable into clinical practice. I think you're going to be hearing all about those sorts of efforts in the next hour. This vision incorporates close collaboration with our hospital partners and colleagues and engages outreach through social media to build large, cost-effective, and highly efficient clinical practices and again, a lot of what this past year has involved has been in building such practices. So in preparing this talk, I thought that it becomes very easy to forget from where you came from and uh, to begin to take things for granted. So in this first slide, I wanted everyone to recall what November 2013 looked like compared to today. So a surgery simulation lab that we're so proud of and actively using today was under excavation. The 13th floor of Baylor Clinic it was pretty much of a ghost town. Um, we uh, talked about going bowling down the alleyway of the uh, 13th floor, pretty much empty. McNair Baylor, as we recall, was quite foggy. We weren't quite sure what we were going to be putting into the McNair building. This, of course, was before the CHI uh, merger became uh, um, organized. And again, the cancer center clinics that Steve Curley has done such a fa uh, fantastic job putting together again, was not even a consideration. From there, we've come to a surgery simulation lab that I think is uh, one of the best in the country and getting better by the day under the leadership of Avo Artinian and Deb Taylor. Our surgery call center through the support of Steve Sigworth has uh, been embedded in the department, become highly efficient, and is providing great service not only to our faculty, but more importantly, of course, to our patients. Uh, McNair is now, of course, part of the CHI Baylor St. Luke's Medical Center, which we are driving to make one of the best in the country. And of course, again, under the leadership of Lisa Eichardt and Stephanie Kearney and uh, many of our staff, we have a state-of-the-art cancer center that in fe features many of the moder modern aspects of providing excellent care to our patients that has been driving tremendous efficiency. Along the way, we've done a lot of things in the past year that I think many of us have probably already forgotten about. I certainly have. This past January was our first surgery jeopardy. In February, we opened the Sim Lab, um, again, which was a project that the Department of Surgery took on to benefit the entire college. In May, we had our first surgery Olympics featuring resident competition in our new Sim Lab. And in June, under Scott Lemaire's leadership, we had our, first, our second very, very successful research day featuring over 85 applications from students and uh, residents affiliated with the program. And of course, in May, we welcomed the uh, DeBakey uh, Alumni Society, uh, again, through Scott Lemaire's efforts and Holly Shillstone's tremendous organizational, organizational opportunity, uh, efforts that featured uh, Vice President Cheney as our keynote speaker, and honoring Ken Maddox and Bud Frazier for their tremendous lifetime contributions, which is just typical of what this uh, department has come to represent. So truly a tremendous year. But nothing that we've done in the past year has been more important than the tremendous new faculty and new leadership that we've been so fortunate to bring to the department. And although there are many, each and every one is so important that I cannot um, do anything but to make sure we mention each, each and every one of them singularly. So Steve Curley joined us from MD Anderson to lead our cancer center in our division of surgical oncology has made a tremendous mark. Harry Moliti has succeeded uh, George Noon, and George has uh, graciously um, and e elegantly led the uh, Division of Heart and uh, Transplant and Assist Devices. Harry has now assumed that um, helm and done a tremendous job. 
Brad Scott has succeeded Mary Brand as a vice chair of education and taken that to new levels. David Sugarbaker, of course, joined us uh, this summer from uh, Brigham and Women's Hospital, has done an amazing job already in the first four months putting together a new thoracic surgery a division in Lung Institute, having been uh, um, uh, brought to us through the uh, great efforts and great distinction of uh, our chief of thora cardiothoracic surgery, Joe Caselli. Barbara Troutner joined us with Steele from the Department of Medicine to become a director of clinical research. Rob Todd joined us from NYU to be a chief of Baylor St. Luke's SICU and chief of general surgery at Ben Taub. He shared in those critical care efforts by Rob Southard, who came to us from WashU, former Baylor um, graduate and already doing great things, uh, making his mark over at the new hospital. And finally, Elizabeth Boniface has come on as section chief of breast surgery under Steve Curley's leadership. A number of additional very key faculty have come on board. Brian Burt coming in at the thoracic surgery group from Stanford. Sean Groth training at UPMC and Jim Lukatich's leadership to uh, help lead esophageal disease efforts. Dr. Mazarwi from uh, MD Anderson Surgical Oncology. Dr. Harton in, uh, over at TCH. Rita Serta and uh, Stuart Core joining Stu uh, Steve Curley in his research efforts. Uh, Jeremy Ward and uh, Mario Vera uh, coming over to the VA, um, heading up uh, critical care efforts also at Ben Taub, Dr. Soraya um, in plastic surgery, and Dr. Jin in uh, pediatric surgery. Finally, early in the year, Dr. Singh in uh, Letsu in cardiothoracic and uh, transplant, Dr. Poi and Dr. Matos in vascular surgery, Dr. Rana joining abdominal transplant group. Dr. Jindra taking a leadership role um, under uh, Dr. Kerman's uh, tutelage in the HLA lab. Dr. Macris, um, Dr. Nguyen um, joining us as well at um, general surgery and plastic surgery respectively. And finally, Dr. Mumtaz, a number of, a number of recruits that Dr. Fraser has brought on to uh, help develop the uh, CHOSA um, affiliate in San Antonio, which is an entire another story that time would not even put, permit to talk about this tremendous success led by Dr. Fraser and the TCH uh, group um, expanding the Baylor footprint uh, through Texas. So in total, 24 recruits in the past year, adding to 10 in the prior year, filling important gaps in the prior um, structure of our faculty and uh, creating uh, leaders for the future of where we plan to go. Um, eight recruitment, uh, eight promotions in the past year with six pending on top of 10 promotions in the prior year. And again, the uh, recognizing and facilitating the academic success of our faculty, a very important part of our present and ongoing efforts. So in total, we constitute 11 divisions, including 122 faculty, as you see here, 14 endowed chairs, approximately 75 additional voluntary and adjunct professors, 200 staff and full-time members other than faculty, serving at seven hospitals and affiliate institutions. We care for approximately 100,000 patients annually, as seen here, and uh, are that where our faculty are joined in those efforts by 105 residents and fellows, including 63 in general surgery, 19 in plastics, and 23 others in other post-core fellowships and uh, residencies. We have approximately 1,500 applicants uh, vying for eight categorical general surgery spots. And for those sitting in the room today, you've, congratulations, you've already made a very significant first cut and an additional 1,000 applicants for uh, 16 preliminary spots. We have 15 PhDs in our research group, uh, joined by 17 students and uh, postdocs. And as we'll see, they are responsible in the past year for over 330 scientific publications. Distribution of a faculty staff is seen here and includes sizable uh, contributions at Baylor St. Luke's and the Baylor College of Medicine, but importantly, important faculty that uh, contribute greatly at our three major affiliates at the VA, Texas Children's Hospital, and Ben Taub Hospital. Joining our faculty and staff have been important administrative recruits, and as we'll talk about the secret about why we have um, brought on these administrators is to facilitate and support the efforts of our faculty, staff, and residents and not the other way around. We have uh, been fortunate in recruiting outstanding support staff who are here to help our faculty and residents do a better job fulfilling our academic mission. So Sarah Moser joined us in general thoracic surgery, Bill Taylor in abdominal transplant, 
Kevin Forster in general surgery and surgical oncology, and Kathy Lynn in plastic surgery. Holly Shieldstone's put together a tremendous team in the education office working with Brad Scott, and these now include Sidney Webster, Ashley Cremedio, and Jay Chambers, all of whom have already made a tremendous mark. So the structure is here, the details are not important, but the takeaway message is we are very fortunate after, after two years of building to have established a very, very strong infrastructure that is here to support the faculty and the residents in terms of what they do, taking care of patients, advancing the science of medicine, and educating our residents and students. Our faculty in the past year continue to be incredibly successful in making the mark just not only uh, regionally at the uh, medical center, but nationally as well. There's literally too many to uh, read through here, um, but they include very, very significant contrib contributions by many of our faculty. Billy Cohn in terms of uh, innovation and invention, Dan Anaya leading the VA in terms of his virtual tumor board efforts, uh, Joe Caselli, who's going to be uh, president of the American Association of Thoracic Surgery, succeeding David Sugarbaker, I believe, as far as I can tell, the only time we've, there's been two sitting presidents of the AETS in the same institution, and on and on and on literally pages of major faculty contributions that don't uh, even extend to uh, all, uh, all the additional regional and national honors. Of course, cannot uh, forget to mention, because he'll tell me about it, Dr. Maddox, who's uh, not only second vice president of the American College of Surgeons, but vice president of the Southern uh, Surgical as well, and former vice president of the American Surgical Association, a trifecta that uh, few in the surgical community have uh, accomplished. Our residents contribute not only as well, but in many ways lead the way because they are the ones who uh, help drive the faculty to contribute support and accomplish as well. And we're going to be spending much time this morning talking about our residents, but their contributions are singular and uh, very, very significant as well. Again, literally too many to uh, mention all by name. The contributions by residents such as uh, Samala Muhammad, um, who, uh, as we'll hear, has uh, had a um, new research track named in her honor because of her accomplishments. Um, Dr. Aftab, who's uh, accomplished much in the cardiothoracic uh, uh, realm, Dr. Anand as well, uh, Nicole Tapia, um, uh, Sarah Fallon, and others have all contributed significantly. In order to codify this better, this past year we've put in place a um, criteria for promotion scale as a uh, available on our web, has been distributed, and clearly defines how these contributions translate into academic promotion. We have a scoring system under David Berger and uh, Dave Wesson's uh, efforts, our FAP committee, now has specific guidelines that they can disseminate uh, to the faculty and have in terms of how uh, your accomplishments translates into criteria for promotion. I think a very important step in terms of improving the transparency and equally importantly, to align this promotion success with uh, financial incentives, because at, at the end of the day, um, it is uh, important that, that, that we have appropriate alignment in terms of what we're supporting and uh, what our accomplishments are. This past year, we announced that um, academic promotion will be accompanied by uh, um, uh, incentive compensation scale as well. Uh, the College of uh, Medicine, in addition to our own efforts, has initiated an XYZ plan that again aligns compensation with accomplishment um, consistent with our goals and our objectives. And uh, without going through uh, the detail that we've discussed previously, the important components of the XYZ plan are the Y component that incentivizes productivity that is group-based. So not just individual performance, but how your performance contributes to your group, your division, um, and your colleague's success, and equally important, and a very important Z component uh, put together by Dr. Larry Ollier and uh, Scott Lemaire working on a uh, task force that looks at our, our incentives for academic accomplishment, decides what's important to us as a faculty and department, and again aligns incentives um, in terms of compensation and bonuses based upon academic contributions such as publications, participation in national meetings, uh, grants and contribution to the education effort. As a first pass of that effort, this past year we distributed over $100,000 in travel funding based upon such a academic accomplishments and we're very excited that this is the first step in uh, realizing and materializing in a alignment between um, distribution of financial resources in the department 
towards academic accomplishment, supporting the efforts of our faculty and residents. So with that as an introduction, let me move on and talk about what we've done in the past year in terms of our three primary missions as an academic department, our clinical mission, our research mission, and our education mission. Quite frankly, in the, pa in the first year um, uh, that I arrived, we spent a lot of time developing the infrastructure of the department, making sure we had a strong education team in place, making sure we had a in research infrastructure in place to support the research efforts of our department faculty and residents. This past year, quite frankly, we spent a considerable amount of time beginning to put in place the key components of a strong clinical program that for many years without a dedicated hospital has uh, waned uh, to some degree, not only in our department, but across um, the college. So let me take a moment to talk about the clinical mission and where we've gone in the past year in terms of uh, realizing uh, the Department of Surgery as a, um, a center of excellence in terms of clinical performance. <coughs> First and foremost, our clinical program would be nowhere and uh, unremarkable without the tremendously important um, contributions and partnership with our affiliate hospitals. Texas Children's Hospital, one of the top four, and I think actually probably top three as far as um, many are concerned uh, nationally, um, under Dr. Fraser's leadership, has really um, just absolutely created milestone after milestone and accomplishment. And uh, Chuck tells me just in this past year, I think a re uh, landmark record number of uh, uh, congenital cases performed and, and certainly uh, monumental um, growth in the past several years under Dr. Fraser's leadership. The uh, singular fetal surgery program in over 6,000 cases performed annually. The VA, um, the VA surgical program on doc, on, under Dr. Wad's leadership, again, is first in many, many aspects um, across the surgical program, not only from the cardiac surgery program under Dr. Keen's leadership, a lead vascular surgery program under Dr. Cugios and uh, Dr. Lin and uh, others uh, doing uh, monumental work um, at the VA in the surgery program under Dr. Anaya's leadership and uh, Artinian, the, uh, the uh, robotic program and the colorectal program, again, are, are singular. And as I mentioned, just in this past year, Dr. Anaya was given the green light to lead a national effort in creating virtual tumor boards around the country. And finally, of course, Ben Taub, the shining star of our program, one of the great um, uh, community hospitals, county hospitals in the country under Dr. Maddox's leadership, now welcoming Rob Ties, our new Chief of General Surgery under Dr. Maddox's leadership. Um, and under Dr. Todd's um, guidance, we will uh, this year be launching a critical care service for the first time at Ben Taub Hospital. The centerpiece, of course, and really the 800-pound uh, elephant that has uh, changed everything um, is the uh, merger of uh, Baylor College of Medicine and uh, St. Luke's uh, Episcopal Hospital a uh, singular accomplishment uh, brought to us uh, through Dr. Paul Klotman, our president's um, outstanding uh, innovative leadership. So for those who uh, might possibly not be aware of what Baylor St. Luke's Medical Center is, it merges our McNair campus, our uh, 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 ambulatory surgery center, and our patient center um, on the McNair campus with the Texas Medical Center, St. Luke's Hospital, the 850-bed hospital, plus the O'Quinn Tower, Baylor Clinic at 6620 and 1709 Dryden. This is a powerhouse that is uh, one of the uh, th three great institutions um, or the great institution on the Texas Medical Center uh, campus. We'll forget about those other um, institutions down the street, really um, trivial in comparison. Um, and importantly, uh, we have uh, merged this institution with Catholic Health Initiatives, a 90 hospital, $10 billion not-for-profit um, that um, in early exposure over the past year, we truly think will work well with the Baylor College of Medicine in aligning our goals and incentives for great academic medicine with an outreach that is going to extend nationally to over six million patient visits a year. The structure of uh, this relationship is uh, unique. Uh, we have 35 percent ownership in this enterprise, so Baylor College of Medicine, instead of needing to ask hospital for support, is a di direct uh, contributor and benefactor um, to our effort. So the better we do, the better we're going to do. And we share joint governance uh, with CHI in the organization of um, uh, Baylor St. Luke's Medical Center. So it's only been 10 months. What have we done? Well, not too much. 
Um, we've started an advanced heart failure center, Dr. Melides, our leadership. We started a cancer center under Steve Curley's uh, leadership, under Dr. Uh, Sugarbaker's leadership. A lung institute is being formed. An abdominal transplant center is uh, in the planning under Dr. John Goss's uh, leadership with Dr. O'Mahony, and others are on their way. These are all, all real centers. They all represent real collaboration with the hospital and our colleagues in medicine, and they're clearly the foundation of clinical care um, in the future and as it should be. Physicians on the medicine and surgery side working together to provide, provide outstanding integrated care for our patients and making sure our efforts are synergized with efforts by the hospital to support these efforts. Ongoing and uh, up and coming, uh, Peter Lin has done an absolutely tremendous uh, job uh, starting from uh, zero and building a, a very robust and a very impactful vascular surgery service over at the new hospital. A year ago, going back to where we started, it was literally unthinkable that Baylor Vascular Surgery would have any footprint whatsoever at St. Luke's Hospital. And now uh, uh, vascular surgery uh, under Peter Lin's leadership is contributing significantly uh, to the vascular surgery program at the new hospital. Thoracic and esophageal surgery, as I mentioned, um, James Suleberg, again, also this year, starting from scratch, came over from Ben Taub and is contributing significantly in terms of thyroid, parathyroid surgery, and endocrine surgery. Again, non-existent a year ago, is now a significant contributor to the clinical enterprise at St. Luke's Hospital. Rob Southerd has um, blazing new trails, literally clearing away debris and creating a critical care program against all odds, unthinkable for 30 years and is now happening. And Rob, I can't thank you enough. Uh, uh, the wounds I know are not uh, deep, but uh, many. Um, and I, I know you're doing it. We all know that you're doing a great job and, and thank you greatly for that. Um, Dr. Artinian has started colorectal surgery uh, and, at, uh, at uh, St. Luke's. And of course, Dr. Boniface is uh, contributing in terms of breast surgery. All, again, easy to take for granted, but none of this existed just a year ago. And from this uh, very significant start, I think a year from now, we're going to be talking about even more significant contributions in terms of innovation and activity at St. Luke's Hospital. This is the depiction of that activity. And uh, Dr. Fisher, Dr. Um, uh, Caselli, um, uh, Dr. Goss, Dr. O'Mahony have all been um, um, in the trenches for years, um, contributing, uh, making an uh, important uh, presence um, at St. Luke's. Uh, but importantly, now we, they have additional support and help in growing the uh, surgery program at St. Luke's from vascular surgery, again, on Dr. Lin's leadership, and uh, thoracic surgery as well. So we think a, uh, a, a path um, to increased um, contribution, increased effort, and increased ability to help our patients at our new hospital. But really, what it's not about is, is volume or presence. It's really doing it in a way that is absolutely a paradigm uh, for, the, uh, for the Texas Medical Center and truly nationally. And the only way we can do that is by doing it as well as it can be done, uh, by doing it in ways that are innovative and thoughtful and uh, taking advantage of uh, new knowledge in terms of how to take care of patients in a way that is safe and efficient um, and maximally effective in support of our patient and their efforts. So we are very fortunate that Dave Berger, just in the several months, has accepted the position uh, as uh, interim chief clinical officer, and I'm fully confident that it's going to convert to permanent. And uh, David is uh, joined by Sam Awad as uh, vice chair for quality improvement in the department, and equally import importantly as director of surgical quality improvement at the hospital. So I think everyone knows uh, Dave and Sam have done an amazing job making the surgery program at the VA the best um, in the country in terms of uh, quality and safety. And I have not, no doubt that under their leadership, they're going to be helpful and effective in doing the same at the hospital. Um, already, their mark is being made. And uh, through the efforts of uh, Bill Fisher, uh, we have an expanded morbidity and mortality conference. We all know that the cent that's the centerpiece of uh, surgical excellence and uh, great quality um, in surgical practices. And our m and conference is uh, taking a um, giant leaps forward in terms of providing um, factual and, uh, 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 and, and helpful information in terms of quality improvement. We're beginning to launch no uh, joint nursing physician, uh, joint management con conferences. Ross Rule is helping on the, us on those efforts in cardiac surgery, and Bill Fisher is going to be leading those efforts in general surgery. 
And through Dan Alvo's efforts uh, working with the hospital, we hope to uh, duplicate and expand that model um, through a surgery network that includes CHI hospitals through the uh, Houston region and beyond. There are, however, a lot of great challenges, as we're all aware, and the challenge for the coming year is going to be sort out, sorting out such mundane but important and critical to the mission um, elements as uh, getting our billing straight, making sure EPIC talks to each other from the college side and the hospital, making sure our transfer and international center works so our patients can get in smoothly and easily without the stress of uh, uh, cumbersome uh, protocols and the like. So while it's easy to talk about um, things that are exciting and, um, and uh, innovative, it's also important that we do the basic blocking and tackling. And hopefully in our commitment, uh, hopefully in the next year, our, our commitment is to make sure that those things are sorted through to working closely with hospital leadership. And the leadership of uh, Dr. Curley and Dr. Fisher, our new division of general surgery and surgical oncology is filling in the gaps in terms of a portfolio of offerings. Uh, and we expect in the next year not only to uh, cover the uh, basics of surgical oncology and general uh, surgery, um, but with uh, Steve uh, Sigworth and Julie Nichols' uh, blessing, we'll hopefully in the next year have bariatric programs, HIPEC programs, um, high level, um, high quality physicians and surgeons providing care for patients with melanoma and sarcoma. And again, critically, a, a critical care program that offers state-of-the-art care for our most ill patients that is evidence-based, um, integrates um, modern um, surgical knowledge and information, um, care delivery protocols, and ultimately is a leader in research in understanding uh, the basis of critical disease and can disseminate that information nationally. We're working hard on the outpatient side, on the Baylor side as well. As I said, the 13th floor of Baylor Clinic was a bowling alley about a year ago, and now is a vibrant center seeing surgical oncology, general surgery, vascular surgery, and thoracic surgery patients, to name a few. We're one of the few embedded on-site call centers, and I have to thank Steve Sigworth for this. This was, uh, as many in the room know, unthinkable. A year or two ago, under Steve Curley's leadership, we've made it work. We have uh, operators who are taking our patient's call who are right next to us on the 13th floor, can answer questions, can ask us questions that our patients have, and has uh, led to our better integration of patient care so that our patients are happier, we're um, able to work more efficiently as surgeons and provide better service. Under Joe Caselli's leadership, we've launched the first of a series of patient guide um, care books that are, we give to our patients are available that are um, animated uh, or not animated, that's to come on, online, but are illustrated, provide uh, easy to understand information to our patients so they don't walk it out of offices bewildered about what we just told them and what's going on. Um, the Scott Holmes has contributed tremendously to these efforts and we uh, plan in the next year to merge this with online services as well. And finally, again, under Lisa Icard's uh, leadership, we have gone so far as to provide things like waiting time, TV screens, and uh, online uh, videos. So while our patients are waiting to see us, they can know where we are, how long it's going to be before we see them. And again, uh, audiovisual information services on television screens in the waiting rooms um, to help facilitate our patients' care and uh, their comfort. These efforts have translated, believe it or not, I never thought you could move a press Ganey score no matter what you did. Um, but in just a few short months, as uh, depicted here, we can see that I think uh, through these efforts, press Ganey scores for a number of our services depicted here as thoracic surgery, general surgery, surgical oncology, vascular surgery, have all improved significantly, even over a quarter. And our plastic surgery, which had already been doing extremely well maintaining that rank. Another slide which I did not include is that this all translates to improved patient referrals. So one of the Press Ganey scores is would you likely refer your, your physician to a friend or family member? And these scores have well been impacted positively because of these efforts. But we probably need to do even better. Um, this is um, a uh, diagram depicting the many steps that our patients go through in receiving care from us. It's pretty complicated. In fact, probably the way we've been doing that is, is a little bit um, historic and needs to be updated. We have about 35 FTEs at a cost of $2.6 million caring for the patients of only 14 faculty number, members. 
This is a historic system where each new faculty member has got their own private MA. Dan Emmy was not necessarily expert in many of these facets of activities, and I think certainly as we grow and uh, grow out of that very old school system, we need to come together and uh, form a more integrated, cohesive, and better organized um, pattern of providing care for our patients. So under task force that's led by a number of our clinical chiefs, we're looking at redeploying our, our staff that supports a clinical enterprise so that it, we have a series of experts, clinical practice managers, NPs, PAs, schedulers who are experts at what they do. Um, we have points of contacts for our patients so that um, our clinical practice delivery is organized in an eff efficient and effective way and we can grow um, significantly at reasonable cost. Um, this is something that uh, we look forward to pro providing uh, for our faculty and, and staff in the upcoming year. The second critical mission, of course, of our department is the education mission. And again, under the leadership of Brad Scott and Holly Shillstone and our wonderful administrative staff, I think we've made significant strides. You've not heard much about the Milestones Project. Um, that's because um, our leadership, Eric Silverfine and Brad and others, have put this together, Shubit Thatri, have put this together behind the scenes. This has literally been, Brad, hundreds of hours of effort putting together milestone projects, documentation, and completely changing the way our residency programs are evaluated. So we're no longer going to be able to uh, have a site visit in year one, do what we want to do for the succeeding three or four years, and then prepare for six months for a next site visit. Going forward, our, our, our reviews are going to be continuous, which obviously means we need to do it better. We need to have it better um, understood and make sure our processes flow better. And again, under the leadership of uh, Brad, Mary Brandt, and, uh, and uh, Holly, uh, we have uh, been able to uh, transition from an iterative process to a continuous evaluation process that's known as the Milestones Project. We'll be talking more about this in, this, in the uh, succeeding months and uh, time, but again, this is a complete reorientation of how our residencies are, are administered, how, our, how we as faculty and our residents are being evaluated is a complete change from the way we've uh, performed uh, education mission in the past, but I think is ultimately going to make the residency much stronger. But we haven't clearly waited for the Milestones Project to try to innovate in terms of our education programs. I've mentioned and won't repeat um, Surgical Jeopardy, the Surgery Olympics, Research Day. We've taken that for granted at this point, and we need to move uh, past that. Uh, we have uh, new programs in place, including our surgical skills uh, boot camp um, that uh, uh, Georgia Holder Haynes and uh, uh, Bindi Nayak Mathuria have uh, put together, amongst others, a very robust faculty mentorship program under Eric Silberfein's uh, leadership, uh, as well as a mock absite and remediation programs, all of which have enhanced, um, as we'll see in a second, um, the performance and I, I think the uh, level of satisfaction of our residents. But we're going to go beyond that, and I'm going to talk about two new programs that I'm excited to uh, announce in more detail today, both our Resident Scholar Program and our Global Rural Health Initiative, which is in response to the interests and, uh, and um, requests of our existing and in incoming uh, residents. Well, I mentioned uh, in completeness our simulation lab, which again opened in uh, February of this past year under the direction of uh, Dr. Artinian and Deb Taylor has been a fantastic success. The Department of Surgery literally took this project on on behalf of the college. It is not a Department of Surgery uh, sim lab per se, it's a sim lab for the entire College of Medicine, but under Avo and uh, Deb's uh, leadership, we took responsibility to make sure that this happened. And in eight short months, this went from planning to opening as a beautiful facility up on the uh, fourth floor of the uh, Cullen Building. Um, it offers opportunity not only for a skills development in a boot camp, it has 24-7 um, key card access, but also op offers opportunity for faculty to engage in Fulbright and Jaworski uh, scholarship activities, peer coaching, and in fact will be uh, reaching outside the community to allow access uh, to the Sim Lab for uh, corporate industry sponsors, other institutions, and the like. Uh, all of these efforts, I think, have directly translated not only to uh, improved uh, incoming resident um, scores, so some top secret information, but we'll share, we'll share with you. Uh, we continue to improve in terms of the quality of the residents uh, coming into the program, and literally, 
We are interviewing and meeting with the very, very top um, students nationally who are interested in coming to uh, Baylor. I think that is a tribute not only to the faculty, but far more importantly to our, in, our existing residents who have just done a stellar job and are true partners in our, our building the program and the department. Um, equally importantly, through the efforts of uh, Eric uh, Silverfine and others, our, our resident performance, our app size continues to uh, improve significantly. And just in the past year, in 2014, we had the highest PGY1 scores on app sites ever, the lowest number in the uh, lowest 30th percentile, and nearly half of our residents either increased 20 points in the past year, year on year, or found themselves in the top 20%. I think a tremendous tribute not only to our faculty, but our, re but our residents, of course, as well, for their hard efforts, industriousness, and conscientious uh, commitment to didactic learning. This all translates into, I think, very positive uh, uh, data in terms of our resident satisfaction levels overall. Um, nearly 85% of our residents in 2013 and 2014 felt that um, their view of the program was either positive or very positive. This is 49 out of 52 respondents in January 2014. On the other hand, we have a lot of work to do in the education program too. Um, with a lot of attention on work hours, a reality in, in this uh, era that is uh, impossible to ignore. Um, Sarah, this is data compiled by Sarah Fallon, uh, who was kind enough to uh, take the extra effort in uh, doing anonymous uh, surveys. We made tremendous strides in terms of making sure we're compliant with work hour violations, but it's an ongoing effort. As you can see here in the, our last uh, survey over the summer, there was some slippage. This is a commitment that we all need to make. Uh, to make sure that we are compliant and that we uh, take care and make, and make sure this critical criteria of resident evaluation, like it or not, it's the reality of the current wor world, is something that we um, um, consider, watch, and make sure we're compliant with. Looking at other aspects of the recent uh, resident uh, survey uh, performed by the RRC, we are successful in doing better in many areas, but there are other areas we're not as successful as I think we all would like to be. So areas like transition for fatigue, problem solving, even fear of retribution are areas where I think we all know that we can and should do better. So today I'd like to announce a new program under Eric Silverfine's leadership that includes a appointing a series of ombudsmen, faculty members throughout the department who can serve as uh, trusted uh, partners that residents can talk to when they do have concerns and problems and are perhaps uncomfortable talking to a more senior leadership. I think the Ombudsman program is something that's been rolled out in a number of institutions around the country has been very successful, and I'm excited that we're able to offer it um, starting uh, in the next quarter um, here in the department. We're going to start regularly meeting with our, our residents in all resident meetings, making sure that we're communicating well back and forth, making sure residents are hearing things that are important to us and, and vice versa, we're hearing from the residents. Um, what areas are important. And I think we need to redouble our efforts to have resident task forces, not only on things such as hospital practice, but on the way we uh, perform in our function in terms of our departmental obligations. So it's really not that hard. And um, I'm going to share with you a conversation that um, I had not uh, too long ago with one of our residents. Teaching is something that comes naturally, I think, to all of us if we just let it happen. So the resident called me and said, we have a case for tomorrow. It's um, something or other. I said, great. Should be perfect for a minimally invasive operation. And I was about to stop there, and then I said, oh, you know, let me be a teacher also. You have to tell me why it should be minimally invasive. The resident said, it's because X. No, that's not it. Let me give you a hint. And the resident said, it's because Y. Wrong again. And he said, sorry, I think I'm missing a subtle detail here. Well, not so subtle, but that's a different story. Faculty <laughs> said, you should be able to figure this out. The resident said, I will, I'll look it up. A little bit of a cop out. I said, it's not in a textbook. You're just going to have to think it through. Gave another hint. The resident said, wrong again. Then he said, oh, wait, exclamation point. And he gave the right answer. There you go, I said. It really wasn't that hard. It took about two minutes. I have to tell you, 
I have not done that very often. Everyone in this room can do and engage that exercise, and I think we would probably triple our ability to be good teachers through those efforts. But we all have a lot on our plate. We all have a lot of things to do. So under Kathy Liscom's leadership, we're collaborating with the Michigan State uh, University in an operative uh, learning trials effort that's going to help put some infrastructure behind and support behind fostering these efforts. And we're looking forward to collaborating with Michigan State under Kathy's uh, guidance and creating a structure for helping with such sort of exchanges. I mentioned global health and the Royal Surgery Initiative. This is also important. Um, it's something that our, our is a, in a global world is an important contribution uh, in terms of what we can offer our residents. And I'm very excited to announce today that under uh, Brad Scott's uh, leadership, we are committing to a two-year elective um, that will be uh, um, in, performed in collaboration with our research track. We're going to offer a resident upon application access to um, uh, activities overseas, either in collaboration with uh, our partners at Texas Children's or through CHI, um, where uh, through the course of two years, these residents can earn an MPH or the equivalent, a doctorate and diploma of uh, tropical medicine, working with our School of Tropical Medicine with Peter Hortez. And ultimately and importantly, in terms of resident-resident interactions, our global track residents are going to be leaders and pioneers in creating global initiatives for other residents in the program to uh, journey overseas and help develop uh, skills in terms of uh, global surgery. So we're very, very excited to uh, offer this in the, uh, in the coming uh, few uh, quarters in our new incoming class of residents. And finally, our students. I think clearly this has been one of the most overlooked aspects of education mission. And I'm thrilled that with, uh, that with uh, Ashley's uh, joining our education staff, uh, Bindi and, uh, and uh, Georgia have made tremendous strides in enhancing our student clerkships. And I think our, it's, there's a series of activities that suggest our students are getting far more engaged and we are being much more engaged with our students who are some of the very finest in the country. So not only Dr. Isidou's efforts in terms of our summer student program that introduces new high school students um, to uh, the Baylor culture, but a number of, uh, of other activities. Um, that's not good. Um, are important in terms of student education. So how have we done? These are the results. These are the criteria from our education retreat this past year. Some areas I think we're doing quite well. We've uh, clearly retooled our evaluation forms. Um, we've improved our level specific expectations. We're understanding better how our residents are progressing. And in other, clearly, there's more work to be done. Um, I think our education leadership is well, well positioned and uh, eager to take on these challenges. And I think many more of these stars in next year's report will be filled in. More to come. Let me conclude by talking uh, briefly about our research mission, which has uh, undergone dramatic change under uh, Scott LaMare and Johnny Chen's leadership and with the addition of Barbara Troutner is now well positioned to support our faculty efforts in terms of uh, making a significant mark in our research endeavors on the national uh, stage. Our Division of Surgical Research, which uh, is constituted of 15 PhDs, has added three uh, to the group, Stuart Kaur and uh, uh, Rita Serta being uh, two of those, Brian Burt um, from Dr. Sugarbaker's uh, group uh, joining as well. Johnny's uh, led a phenomenal weekly seminar series that is informative, creates opportunities for collaboration. It's Friday afternoons at 12. It is a truly uh, the state of the art in terms of disseminating information. Our clinical research core I'll talk about in a moment, but importantly, under Barbara's uh, leadership, we now have an IPREP grant critique review where every single grant that we're submitting as a department, um, the investigator, the PI, has an opportunity um, actually an expectation to meet with a group of peers to critique, improve, and make sure those grants are as good as they can be prior to submission. I'm going to talk briefly about two new programs, our Resident Research Scholars Program and our Faculty Scholars Program that importantly, I think, position us, ourselves to do better in terms of NIH uh, funding and uh, ranking nationally. And finally, under uh, Billy Cohn's uh, leadership, our Surgery Incubator not only is taking uh, research for academic purposes, but is taking the great ideas in the department and actually translating them into potentially commercially viable ideas that can be delivered to patients um, to actually improve patient care. 
And in the few short months that the incubator has been formed, uh, not only have we had tremendous ideas generated, but we've actually already had a number of patent applications submitted, just having our faculty talk to each other, sharing ideas, and building upon those ideas. Our core group now constitutes uh, 15 different members, representing everything from uh, database management um, under, Hua, uh, under Hua's uh, leadership to uh, biostatistic, biostatistician support under Courtney Arredondo's uh, efforts to medical editing um, and clinical research support. A critical uh, structure, infrastructure that's in place to support faculty and resident efforts. And the good news is that the message is getting out um, and the core infrastructure support group is get, becoming busier and busier in supporting research efforts of our faculty and uh, residents as seen here. The number of grants, manuscripts, statistical analyses, and data projects have all nearly doubled in the past year, as has our utilization. Um, so in 2013, there were um, $5 million worth of grants submitted under core uh, support. In 2014, that number had increased to $36 million. Those have translated into a record number of publications. The department increased from 245 in 2013 to 330 in 2014, including, as depicted here, a number of uh, lead journals and over 40 papers in high-impact journals with uh, impact factors over seven. There are literally too many significant papers to um, list here, but I'll just point out a few. Dr. Caselli's uh, work on transcatheter aortic valve replacement that was published as a co-author in New England Journal of Medicine. Dr. Bud Frazier's um, uh, seminal paper um, on increase in uh, LVAD uh, thrombosis rate that was uh, published as a single author publication in the New England Journal of Medicine. And Dr. Bakin's um, very uh, important contribution that appeared in JAMA this past year talking about the crisis at the VA. But there are many others, um, and uh, literally they contribute in the entire spectrum of um, uh, surgical academic uh, uh, research, from uh, Dr. Van Buren efforts and, uh, with Dr. Fisher in terms of understanding uh, proper treatment for uh, Whipple uh, procedures, to uh, work on the basic science level by Dr. Curley, Dr. Mazarwe, Dr. Artinian, and, and others. These are coupled with significant improvements um, and advances in our research uh, grant and clinical trials efforts. Dr. Cujo's um, uh, spearheading what will ultimately hopefully prove to be a $12 million project uh, supported through the VA looking at transfusions in patients undergoing vasco surgery. Um, the double uh, header uh, success of Dr. Suleberk um, in, in his uh, Moore Foundation grant looking at um, uh, mobile technology and surgical outcomes in his uh, recent R21 grant, Dr. Anaya's uh, um, virtual tumor board uh, project, and, uh, on, and on and on. Significantly, uh, I want to point out uh, Somala Mohammed um, having uh, received an F32 NIH uh, Service Award grant. Um, this um, was uh, truly inspirational to us, and as I'll talk about in a second, uh, was the source of our creating a new program to support resident research. Um, and uh, support in terms of faculty development. So the good news is our total grant support has increased from 2.8 million to 4 million in the past three years. The bad news is seen on the top bar is that our NIH funding has sunk to only $329,000 in two NIH grants. It should be uh, increased significantly in the next year. Um, which, of course, um, arbitrarily or not, is a very si significant benchmark of research success. So what are we going to do about it? Well, in the past year, we launched a series of seed grant um, uh, efforts. Uh, these were awarded to Dr. Vasudevan, Dr. Liang, and Dr. Singh. These have been very, very successful. Um, all three investigators have accomplished a lot, as pictured here. And clearly, I think this is a seed for further advancement. So in 2015, we're going to be, be announcing a larger RFA-based grants. We're going to be um, asking um, for um, applications that will be in uh, areas of excellence and focus that will be team-based projects and we think will be a suitable uh, starting points for NIH-funded activity. <coughs> As I mentioned, uh, Samala Mohammed's success in uh, translating her efforts in an F32 uh, grant have inspired something that I think is singular in the country. So for research residents who come in, if you uh, are tracking well in terms of accomplishment, uh, productivity, and uh, uh, um, award uh, receipts um, in terms of NIH support, 
not only are we going to continue to support that um, efforts in your residency program, we're actually coming into the program if you're successful in staying on track in terms of research accomplishment. Coming in as a um, student, we are going to offer a guaranteed faculty position in the department assuming you stay on track um, in terms of your research accomplishments. I think this must be a, a singular program in the country and I think will suit us well to making sure that we um, not only attract but ret retain uh, great research residents who are accomplishing much, such as Dr. Muhammad, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Tapia, uh, Dr. Fallon, amongst um, others. We're excited that we have residents here and we want to do our very best to keep them here. Transitioning to a faculty, we're going to offer the equivalent on the faculty level. We all know that we're torn by clinical obligations and research interests, and it becomes very hard to support our research faculty uh, when they uh, have uh, strains and uh, demands in terms of, of uh, clin clinical activity. So for uh, faculty who apply and uh, we feel are, are suitable, we're going to offer a, a protected uh, faculty scholars program where we'll provide up to five years of support um, Stephanie is getting a little pale as uh, I'm talking. Um, five years of support on research track faculty. I'm assuming if they're successful, they transition into NIH funded faculty. Um, if they are not quite meeting the mark because of the great constraints on this, we'll also provide support to trans transition them back into a uh, matrixed uh, clinical research um, faculty member. So a lot going on in the department. Uh, the reality of the world is also very important to make sure um, others know about it. Through, 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 so through uh, Alan Milowitz and Scott um, Holmes' efforts, we are increasing our web presence, which I think is a, a fundamental and um, unavoidable reality of the uh, modern world. Our web traffic is improving. Just this past year, we purchased an um, illustrative uh, project called Atom that provides great graphics that we can add to our web and will increase our visibility on the web. And uh, through these efforts, we think that our website and our revamped um, presence uh, on the internet will be an important driver of um, awareness of what's going on in the program, referrals, clinical activity, and our presence nationally. The other reality of the world that we really can't um, ignore are things like social media, Facebook and Twitter. Our presence is small, but we uh, promise and are committed over the next year to continue to grow these. These seem like very esoteric, silly things, um, but they are driving activity in the world, and I think it's important that we commit um, to uh, having a strong presence in the, uh, in the social media world. And uh, one of our next recruits on the administrative site, side will be a webmaster who is going to help all of us who are um, preoccupied with other things that are, are significantly more um, impactful in terms of making sure we cover this space as well. So the driving engine of all of this, last and, and uh, unfortunately not least, are the financials. And uh, fortunately, uh, I think Julie Nickel might be here. We have good news to report on that front as well after um, significant effort. So we're not quite there yet but the trends are encouraging. So as we talked about last year, our revenues are almost um, hyperbolic in terms of growth. That's the good news. Bad news is our expenses are hyperbolic <laughs> as well. Um, we've been in a growth phase. We've added a lot of people. We are really appreciative of the college being supportive of that, understanding that you need to grow to be successful. Um, but there's a reality that we need to deal with, and, it, and again, I think because we are being successful, I, I think that's falling, beginning to show signs of falling into place as well. And as long as we're careful and smart, I think this, this challenge and this issue is going to take care of itself. So our deficit did grow. Um, this was planned. This was approved and supported by the college, which I think is tremendous. We are very fortunate to be working in an environment where leaders like uh, Paul Klotman and Julie and uh, Steve and Lori Tabak get it and are supportive of uh, success. Um, but we, of course, need to be responsible. So the good news is, a little bit of a complicated slide, the blue is budget, the red is actual. And what I'll draw your attention to is the uh, bar at the uh, right, which is our projected outcomes for 2015. And for the first time in several years, um, you can see that our budget um, is actually, um, our actual performance is um, actually better than budgeted. 
Right now, we're standing at about a million dollar surplus to budget, and we expect by the end of the year that's going to persist as about a $500,000 surplus to budget. It doesn't mean we can spend it. We're still being supported by the college to the tune of about $4 million. But I think it's a very positive trend, and it suggests that we can be responsible and uh, fiscally efficient in a way that can uh, support um, continued um, uh, underwriting of the mission and our continued growth and success. So in conclusion, I just uh, would like to remind us all of what our um, goals were from last year. We had uh, decided that we wanted to build centers of excellence. We are well on our way to uh, doing exactly that. We wanted to develop an infrastructure to port, support surgical research. Uh, we've uh, taken great strides in accomplishing that. We wanted to improve our infrastructure in terms of things like billing and appointment setting communication. A lot of work to be done in that area. We want to improve our intra baylor on um, referrals. I think we are all working as a community. I think that's very encouraging. The fact that we have VA doctors and Ben Taub doctors now also being St. Luke's doctors, I think is a tremendous uh, step forward in terms of working together as a department. And finally, we wanted to do a better job um, teaching our faculty to be educators. And I think we've taken good first steps, but have a long way to go. What should be our goals for the upcoming year? I would put to you that our Centers for Excellence and, um, and Clinical Success are going to be an important next step in terms of building our clinical program. Hopefully, with the arrival of Diana Milowitz, we are going to take a leap forward in building a state-of-the-art genetic surgery program that is going to lead nationally. We're going to continue to integrate our Bale or St. Luke's uh, service lines. We're going to do the uh, sort of mundane but important um, digging of, uh, of uh, understanding infrastructure and better organizing billing, communication, web development, and the like, <laughs> stuff that is not very glamorous but important. I think with the uh, programs that we put in place, uh, we're going to have a very successful year and spend a lot of time focused on developing NIH-funded research. And finally, our education programs through uh, Brad Scott um, and our other um, uh, education leaderships are going to take a very significant leap forward in terms of our programs, our Sim Lab, our Resident Scholars Program, our Global Re Rural Surgery Initiative, and the like. So in conclusion, I would remind um, everyone of Ben Franklin's statement, energy persistence, conquer all things. I hope that's true. I would rather it be that way than Sisyphus trying to uh, continue to roll the rock uphill. But I think as we've shown in the past two years at working together, we can accomplish uh, great things. And I, uh, again, as I said last year, just tremendously honored and uh, privileged to uh, be here um, helping in those efforts. And I think we all should be uh, thankful the tremendous colleagues and partners that we have in this room that work with us all together. Again, thank you for your support and help and look forward to a great year going forward. Thank you. <laughs>